St. John Baptist Church. Amen. It is so good to see you this morning. Your face in the place for those of you who are worshiping and connecting through social media. God bless you. Thank you for connecting with us. And we pray that God will meet you where you are and bring you to where you need to be and make that faith that you have contagious. The audacity of faith. Luke chapter 7 verses 1 uh, through 10. If you have it, say, I got it. Amen. And after he had finished all the, his sayings and the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a, a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death, who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews asking him to come and heal his servant. All right. Now check this out. Check, check out this approach. Okay. Yeah. Verse 4. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly saying, listen to this. this you get this. He is worthy to have you do this for him. And then he brings up patriotism. For he loves our nation. And then, and he is the one who built us. Now they bring up the five of us. With the, the grant. With the grant, rather. With okay. the grant, do uh, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. He is worthy yeah. for you to do this to him. For him. Verse 6 And Jesus went with them when he was not far from the house. The centurion sent his friends. Sent friends. Now Jesus in another group saying to him Now I want you to compare this contrast. This is what he just said. Y'all ready? Lord do not trouble yourself for I am not worthy yeah, yeah. to have you come under my roof. All right. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word. And let my servant be healed. For I too am a man set under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled. Appreciate that. Usually they marveled at him. This time Jesus turned around and said, if he had a computer, he would have put W-O-W. -W. Jesus turned around and he marveled at him and turned to the crowd and followed him say and said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And with those who had been sent, returned to the house, they found the servant well. Uh, Want to talk about the audacity of faith. Real quick, the audacity of faith. I just got two things I want to bring up in this text. What do I see about faith that's so audacious? What is it about this faith that's so amazing? One thing I want to say is this, that it is a, it is a status defying faith. That's the first thing I want to say. I want to say it is a status defying faith. That is, he's coming to him and saying, it ain't about who I am and what I got and all that. I know what they said about me. But he defies status and he breaks cold. It's a status defying faith. And the second thing I see is that it is a social distancing faith. Because he said, you ain't even got to come to my house. You, you can do it at a distance. Well, y'all get with me, I can just blow this thing right now. It is a status-defying faith. And it is a social distancing faith. First thing I say, I said it is a status-defying faith. We're going to get to it. Let's crawl to the text where it says in chapter 7, verse 6, that I am not worthy. But let's work our way to that. That's where, where I'm going. I'm going to travel there, but that's where we're going to get off on the off-ramp where he says, I'm not worthy. So the text begins with this man, this centurion, who uh, is uh, over at least 100 men. He's a soldier that's over at least 100 men. So he's a man that's well acquainted with authority. He's well acquainted with power. He's used to being able to say this or that and get his way. But in this particular situation with this uh, slave, this servant that he has, he finds himself in a situation where his authority and his power and all that he has ain't working for him. Uh, and this guy who's used to having his way and being able to make things 
happen. He finds himself in a situation that is beyond his pay grade, beyond his control. Y'all do know that God will do that to you sometimes. He'll put you in a situation where you used to having control and be able to go to an ATM and just punch it and you able to go to take this medicine and do this or that and the other and uh, you basically in control. You got the job and you able to, they let you go there when you pull out your resume, go somewhere else, they hire you, all that. You used to have it your way, but every now and then God will put you in a situation. All right, man. That's the, are y'all with me this morning? Think about just the man. So y'all, are y'all talking to me behind that man? He will put you in a situation beyond Beyond your limits and your control. You say, why? Well, let's ease into it. Let's enter into the situation where you have this uh, a centurion and a slave. Um, I, I want you to kind of just kind of imagine this man. It's easy to just say centurion, slave, and this is what it is, and that's what the dictionary said, and just and Jesus healed it. But I want you to enter into this because the more you can empathize with this brother, the more you can see yourself in the place where he is, because eventually Jesus is gonna say, What's up with me? Yeah. 
Look at your neighbor and say, it ain't me, it ain't me. <laughs> Can you put yourself in that situation? Can you see yourself? I'm utterly helpless. I can't do nothing about it. I'm used to in control. And now I'm put in a situation where I can't do anything about it. As we go into this, appreciate that God will and understand. He's going to say, this guy got faith. At the end of the story, this guy got faith. So it ain't about a sick, 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 whatever. No, we dealing with somebody who got faith. Why would God put you in this situation? Right, you ain't got no control. Well, but here it is. Let me just kind of just preview it. Uh, it must be a God-sized dilemma if you go witness a God-sized deliverance. see a God sized deliverance. I'm going to circle that block and say that one more time. Because you want it in a while. Because you think you got this little thing. Uh, now I'm going to deal with that in just a minute. Because we got enough. Because we're going to talk about you be worthy for this. We're going to deal with that in just a minute. But, but there's something in me. I'm saying wait a minute God. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. What now? And I and, and understand. It ain't just the stuff that happened to you. This text, the centurion is not the one that's Let me go show my hand. This text really ain't about 
the healing because he just gives like one little blur right. on the healing. The emphasis is on the man's faith that is contrasted yeah. with this arrogance here. He's worthy, then he's gonna come back and say, I'm not worthy. That's the, that's, that's the issue here. Yeah. So notice what he said. He said, that, the, notice the arrogance. Verse 4. Oh. Uh, and when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him, earnestly saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him. And then what he do, y'all, I put this in my notes, I want to put it like this. They start reading his report card. <laughs> to get that up, get to know, he, he know what he got to A when it comes to, to loving the country and God and country. He got he to A in that. Because the text said he, he loves, he loves our nation. Yes, sir. And, and when it comes, when it comes to, to helping us out and, and being somebody who's going to be an underwriter because we ain't got enough money to do what we do. But he came, and although he ain't a Jew, he, he helped us yeah. to build synagogue. Lord, he is worthy for you to do this. Matter of fact, you are actually we are actually in his debt. Alright, man. Uh, Alright. And because he's been good to us, yeah. uh, right. he deserves for you to be good to him. Alright. Alright. Uh, y'all, y'all.
show some folks. Yes, Political entitlement. Yeah. 
Look at somebody say, he about to meddle now. There's also church in type. So let's get off CNN. And let's just deal with us. Because I've been here so long. Because I've been in this ministry. Because I've done so much for the church. Because I've given so much and sacrificed. And because of that, I think. And with that reverend, when I die, and they put me across here, and he do my eulogy, I want him to talk about the stuff that I've done and how much I gave and how much I sacrificed. And him to say, because you've done all that, surely you have gone into the gates of heaven. But I'm here to tell you, God, don't work on no merit system. When you stand before him, he's not going to ask him, how much did you give in church? He's not going to ask you about your perfect attendance. Try 
man. Yeah. The man at the end, the text says, sends out friends. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And now the friends are going to fix it for him. He responds to their audacious arrogance all right. All right. with audacious faith. Yeah. 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 Can we read it? Yeah. Look at verse 6. And Jesus went with them when he was not far from the house. The centurion sent free, saying to him, Lord, do not don't trouble yourself. All right, for I am not worthy. Let me just read it again. For I am not worthy. Now compare that to verse 4. Verse 4 said, he is worthy. Mm -hmm. Verse 6, he cleaned this up and said, I am not worthy. This is a, a specific. Y'all see that? Now let me do that one more time. Look at your mouth. I want you to see that's a deliberate contrast here. Verse 3, he is worthy to have this done for him. He comes and responds with his friend, for I am not worthy to have you even come. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's not going to be because of my word. Yeah. Uh -huh. Huh? All right. All right. All right. It's going to be because of your word. Yeah. Uh -huh. Y'all come say it. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't read it. Verse 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really didn't even say that. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. I did not presume yeah. to come to you. Yeah. But say the word. Uh -huh. All right, now. And let my servant yeah. be healed. Yeah. He puts himself at the mercy of God. And that's, he's, he, let's go revenge now this report card. Remember, we right. said the first guy they brought the report right. card up to him. He did this. Yeah. And he did this. Yeah. What, what this guy does, how does he get to this place? Uh -huh. And how do I get to this place? In essence, the reason why he can measure God's work, the reason why he say, I am worthy, right. because he's had an accurate assessment of that Jesus is worthy. And yeah. once I see yeah. Jesus yeah. for who he is, yeah. uh -huh. I'm in a place now to see myself for who I am and who I am not. Uh -huh. See, my, can I do that one more time?
Because at the end of the day, I always want to raise my hand and say, yeah, I know God did it, but look where I did this. <laughs> but when I say I'm unworthy, I have to acknowledge and throw my pride out the window. And I got to come before him clean and open and say, Lord, if you give me what I deserve, All right, man. I'm going to hell with gasoline drops. All right. Yeah. I need you to do it as a sheer act of mercy. And then he says, yeah, it's an audacious faith. Jesus turned around. Wow. But not only is it audacious faith because, yeah, it's a status divine faith, but it's a social distancing faith. Verse 7 again, therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but, but say the word. All right. All right. And let my servant be healed. And actually he said, look, matter of fact, Two reasons why I want to come. I ain't going to come to you, but I don't want you coming to me. I don't feel like I'm worthy to be in your presence, and I sure don't feel like you're worthy to come under my door. But I know we social distancing now. Uh -huh. but, but because you got so much power. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the reason why I know you got so much power is because I assess your worth. And because I un uh, understand your worth, I understand the power of your word. Let me put that together again. Wait a minute now. I understand your worth. He's responding to what he's impressed with with you. He's responding. 
uh, this prosperity gospel thing because what is, and, and, and here's the thing, what makes the prosperity gospel, and what I saw about prosperity in this first term, that you can command God to do this for y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all heard that? Yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I see, I, I see how you heard. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you can speak this and you can do that. Yeah. You can tell God this, that, and the other. Yeah. In yeah. Genesis, God gave man dominion. And what it means for God, man, to have dominion, that is that you tell God what to do. Oh. And I'm like, well, oh. what kind of cocaine is that? Oh. <laughs> you have lost your, your mind. That's some strong drugs. Oh, talking about we gonna tell God what to do. Yeah. When God gave man dominion, that didn't mean that he turned the keys over to you and tell him, okay, whatever y'all want to do. No, because if God gave you dominion like that, when you tell him what to do, how did he kick Adam out the garden? Yeah, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. He didn't ask permission yeah. for Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Can I please sir, kick you out the garden with you please? Yeah. With all due respect, no, get out.
but we ain't. Uh-huh. You say, yeah, you know, we're kind of giving nod to, yeah, I know all of us is sin. Uh, yeah, yeah. But what the, I just don't understand how you go, let's see y'all. Because see, what I want to do is I want to make a difference. Yes, and I want to say, yeah, we both got funk. Yeah. But I can put Febreze on that. Yeah. I said we both got funk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you just let yours just spill out a whole bit. I, at least I try to put some perfume on that. But the, 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 you know that when you try to put perfume on funk, let me somebody say, it just don't make you better. Oh, I'm enjoying myself.
you and me. Uh -huh. Jesus said, I need y'all to check this dude out. Yeah. And look at his kind of faith, because this is the kind of faith you're going to have to have. On, because man. I'm going to die on the cross. Yeah. I'm going to be buried in the grave. Yeah. I'm going to get up with all power in my hand. Yeah. I'm going to walk around for 40 days. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to order me a lift. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm checking up out of here. Y'all yeah. killed me once, y'all ain't going to do it no more. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to leave you here. Well, of my ministry. Yes, yes. Going to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria yes. and the other most parts of the earth. But here's the problem. I'm not going to be here physically. You're not going to be able to access my physical presence. Yes. So you're going to have to have faith in me when you can't see me, you can't touch me. Yes. There's no tangible. And sometimes heaven is going to look like that it's closed up and you're going to feel like I'm nowhere near. I'm going to need you to have this Jesus! 
Sooner or later, yeah. you got to come down to the valley. Yeah. And you ain't going to feel that feeling. And you ain't going to feel that touch. And you ain't going to get that sensation that you had when everybody was speaking in tongues. We ain't going to have none of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to feel sometimes like God has left the beat. Uh -huh. And you're going to be at a point in your life. Yeah. Some of you all right there. When God had put some stuff on my plate that I just can't control. Yeah, right. And he said, yeah, you ain't got no physical presence. And I ain't gonna come and break clouds down right now. Okay. I don't need to. I need you to adjust to me. And I need you to have this centurion faith. You ain't got to step in here. But wherever you are, you can speak the word. The word has the power to reach you. And it's not gonna be because, and notice the test, y'all. He doesn't brag one on how much he gave. He don't brag on how much he loved or think. I don't know where. But notice, he don't even brag on his own faith. Jesus brags on his faith. Let me do that again. He ain't even saying, because I got this great faith, you deserve it. No. You, you, you don't brag on your faith. You just have it. Let Jesus do the brag. You just do the trust. Say for all of you who are undeserving, 
All right. For all of you who would identify with this centurion and understand that I ain't bringing nothing to the table. Matter of fact, the stuff that I'm bringing to the table is my sin and my mess and my transgressions and my trespasses and all the stuff that I've done against God that deserves his wrath. That's what I'm bringing to the table. But if you follow him to Jerusalem, Jesus gets on the cross and said, give it to me. Give it to me. Give me your tab. Give me your tab. Give me your tab. I don't want all that stuff you gave talking about what you did in the church. No, give me that sin. Give me that mess. Give me that stuff. There we go. That's all you got to give me is your sin. And he gets on the cross and nails it to his cross. Sheds his blood and says, I'm going to take your place. What you deserve, I'm going to take the hit for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Trust me. I'm going to get on this cross and die for yourself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one of a kind son. That whosoever, here it is, y'all, believe on him. Yeah, Trust yeah. him with your eternal destiny right. to do for you what you can't do for yourself. Should not perish, but have life eternal. Faith is the hand that receives what God has to offer. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. That's you this morning. Jesus, he didn't respond just like he didn't respond to these other guys. He did this. He gave that. He gave that. He didn't say a word. The only time Jesus turned around and said, wow, was when the man said, I ain't worthy. Yes, and if you speak your word, your word has the power yeah, yeah. to take folks who are dead and give them life. All right, yeah. All right. Would you trust him this morning? Would you trust him on his time and in his terms? Lord, I'm worthy. I ain't trying to be something I'm not. Here I am, broken, messed up. That's why I need you. Yes. And I trust you, Jesus, that your sin, your, your, your cross, and your uh, sacrifice on the cross was sufficient enough to take care of every last one of my sins. And I believe that you died and you rose again to give me life. And I trust you right now. If that's you this morning, this is your time, this is your opportunity, you can come on down. All right. Second invitation is this. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you do not have a church home, God's put it upon your heart to be a part of this church family. I don't believe I'm by myself when I say it. This is your time.
Let's um, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch. Yeah. 
do this in remembrance of me. Father, we give you praise and we thank you that although we deserve not the, not the Israelites, we deserve your wrath. And just because we have been in a victimized situation, we still were violators. But yet in our violation and in our sin against you, you provided for us Jesus, who is the ultimate sacrifice, who became the ultimate Passover lamb. And through his blood, unlike the lamb back there, but the true lamb of God, that forgives sin once and for all. Thank you for your blood, that is, it brings us into a new covenant that guarantees that we are declared righteous not because of what we have done but because you have satisfied the demands of justice by your cross All right. All right. and placed upon us the status of righteousness because of your son Jesus. Yeah. Thank you Lord for sanctification yeah. that you guarantee that you're going to take us through this wilderness and the work that you have begun you're going to complete. And we thank you for glorification. Yeah. That we'll finally get to the destination yes, and be just like you. Yeah. Cause us, Lord, to have faith in light of what you have done, what you are doing, and what you yet will do. Right. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, thank God. Yeah.